I am Prasad from the Structural Guide. You are welcome to the Structural Guide YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss about shallow foundation failures. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You may get the notification on new videos. What is a shallow foundation? Foundation that are constructed at the shallow depth of all the shallow foundations. So depth of the foundation is not that significant like a deep foundations where we constructed up to the bedrock or even beyond the bedrock. Pad footings, combined footing, rough foundations, strip footings, inverted T-type footings are can be considered as shallow foundations. These foundations are most of the time rested on the soil. The soil bearing capacity we consider in designing these type of foundations. So the capacity of the soil is the criteria that we select the foundation type. So depending on the uh, bearing capacity, bearing capacity, we may select uh, footing, pad footing, maybe combined footing, maybe strip footing. Those will depend on the bearing capacity. So therefore, the bearing capacity is very important in foundation design and construction. Type of shallow foundation failures. Mainly there are two ways that foundation can fail. First one are the geotechnical failures, that is failure of the soil. Second one is structural failure. Structurally foundation can fail. In geotechnical failures, or this soil failure can be categorized on three main categories. General shear failure, local shear failure and punching shear failure. Next, we are going to discuss about our structural failures. Main three types are there. Mainly, there are three types of structural failures. Bending failure, punching shear failure, vertical line shear failure. So, let's discuss about each type of these uh, geotechnical failures in detail. General shear failure. Gradual increase in the load increases the pressure under the foundations. So when you increase the pressure on, on to the foundation or when you increase the load on the foundation, the pressure will be increased. When the pressure reaches its ultimate limit state value, soil will not be able to bear this increased soil pressure. This, then the soil will fail. So the general soil failures occurs most of the time in, the, in low compressible soils. That is generally hard soils. Commonly, dense sand soil, stiff coarse soils, this can be observed. Foundation may tilt or it may be settled excessively with the settlement. You can see in this diagram also, this is the shear failure of these kind of foundations. Local shear failure. This occurs medium dense soil. Not previously we discussed about the dense soil, basically a hard soil. This is a medium dense soil shear failure. So you can see here the shear, previously the shear failure will be like this, but here it's reduced. This is the shear failure line. So this increase in the pressure caused the settlement of the foundation. This causes the failure of the foundations. Failure surface of the foundation gradually extend toward the, toward outwards from the foundations. So this failure fail may be extend outward on the foundations with the settlement. Surface may not be extended ground surface as the soil is soil is compressible or due to the deeper depth of the foundation. If it is a shallower depth, this failure pain will reach there. If it is deeper depth, it will remain somewhere there. But uh, when when it is a shallow foundation or the, when it is shallow depth, very close to the uh, ground, this this failure frame may extend to the ground surface level also. Punch in shear failure. This type of failures occurs when foundation rests on a loose soil, where the settlement of foundation is very high. Shear surfaces are not developed due to the compressible nature of the soil. As you can see in this figure, the shear failure frame are not developed. This is the shear failure lines that occur with the compressibility, high compressibility of soil, 
the soil shear plane will be like this. Soil under the foundation compressed and it cannot bear the pressure applied from the foundation. So with that there this failure occur. Now we discuss about the geotechnical failures. Now we are going to discuss about the structural failures. Bending failure of the foundations. It's a very critical thing in the foundation construction in structural aspect. Bending failure of the footing is a structural failure. It would occur due to following reasons. Inadequate reinforcement. That is kind of a design failure. If you haven't provided adequate reinforcement to the footing based on the load and thickness, there may be a failure. Inadequate section thickness. Again, it related to the load and the, the, the section capacity and the reinforcement area we provide. So, this is a combination. Uh, now, the section thickness and the reinforcement requirement is combination of the capacity of the footings in bending. So, corrosion of the reinforcement, inadequate cover may be, uh, aggressive environmental conditions, so uh, the aggressive chemical like sulfate, chloride that has, could lead to the corrosion of the reinforcement. If reinforcement corroded, there may be failure in the foundation. Increase in the design loads. Now we design for the structure for certain load, but if accidentally or due to any other reasons, we may sometimes increase the load. For example, uh, the building we have designed for two stories. Sometimes if someone build another story up there. There will be significant significant increase in the load that could cause failure of the foundation. Punch and shear failure of the footings. This is also kind of a structural failure. This is a shear failure mode of the foundation in structural structurally. The punch and shear the alone the punch and shear perimeter the footing will be fail. So we have to check the punch and shear capacity of the footing based on the applied load and the area of the foundation and the pressure applied by the soil on the foundation. So considering those we have to check the punch and shear. So the punch and shear perimeter is defined based on the critical perimeter. So different standards have different punch and shear perimeter for their, their considerations during designs. As you can see here. ACI have a different value than the BS. BS have a different value than the error code. That depending on the standard you use, you have to consider that. Vertical line shear failure. That is failure of the footing along its edge. Support edge. Say this is the footing. So failure along this line. Along the surface of the edge. So the, the capacity, the maximum shear stress, the, the footing can bear has to be checked. There. There, are, there are method how to check the maximum shear capacity at this stress. Shear stress at this location. So if we, if we know the axial load and we, we, if we know the depth, so we can find the stress there. That, that stress should not exceed maximum allowable shear stress by the concrete. So, Concrete have a certain shear capacity without the reinforcement. So those uh, maximum allowable shear capacity should should meet there. If exceed, there may be vertical line shear failures in the foundations. With that, we end the today's discussion. Today we are discussed about foundation failure. What are the type of foundation failures we discussed today? So how we proceed with these, these failures and how, how we... Uh, how should we know about these failures were discussed and uh, let's meet again from another video. Thank you very much.